Hello viewers and welcome to ITTV. This is our first lesson together and so I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Miss Sylvia and I'll be taking you through the Form 4 Additional Mathematics lessons. Additional Mathematics is a new course that you will be experiencing this year in Form 4. You would have, of course, gone through your PMR and covered many chapters in mathematics already. But you will find that additional mathematics will take you even further into more interesting and deeper topics. If you are taking additional mathematics in Form 4, you will surely also be taking mathematics itself. Now, being trained in these two uh, subjects of maths will take you very far into the study of this interesting field. In fact, additional mathematics may sometimes overlap with mathematics, but it does also cover deeper topics and it helps to train you in analytical thinking and critical thinking as well. So I really look forward to discussing the chapters and the topics in additional mathematics with you. Let's start with our very first chapter in additional mathematics for Form 4, and that will be the chapter on functions. Since almost all of our study in mathematics will be dealing with this particular concept of functions, it is best that we start with a very fundamental discussion of this topic. And we're going to begin with relations. What are relations? A relation is defined as an association that relates elements of one set to another. A set informally is a collection of items. Each item in the set is known as the element and the elements are listed inside a pair of curly braces. In additional mathematics, you will find that there are certain set ways to write certain notations to use when we want to indicate a particular topic or a particular issue. And so in this case, if we want to represent a set, we must make sure that we indicate each element and write it in a pair of curly braces. More to come in a short while. For example, express the following in set notations. A. A is the set of factors of 4. And part B. B is the set of single digit prime numbers. As you can see, when A is the set of factors of 4, we find that A is equal to 1, 2 and 4. But these three elements are written in a pair of curly braces because we are calling it a set. And similarly for part B, B is the set of single digit prime numbers where the elements for B are 2, 3, 5 and 7 to be written in the pair of curly braces as stated before. Now we've been told that set A is made up of the factors of 4. It is not uncommon that you will sometimes find in textbooks the description of the set can also be written in words at first. So within a pair of curly braces, we could write the statement A is the set of factors of 4. And this is to be followed by the actual elements themselves. As you know, 4 is made up of two possible combinations. We could say that 4 is equal to 1 times 4, and there already we have two factors, which are 1 and 4. Or 4 can also be written as 2 times 2. Now since the second one contains the same number twice, we only need to write it once. And hence, coming back to filling in the elements of set A, it should be written as 1 followed by a comma, 2 comma 4. Do take note viewers that the writing of a comma is very important because it separates the elements within the set. Secondly, set B is the set of all single digit prime numbers. So, as I mentioned just now, it is alright to write the statement that describes the set within the set of within the pair of curly braces to be followed then by the actual elements. 
Now, do you recall what prime numbers are? Prime numbers are numbers which can only be divided by themselves or by one. Okay. Of course, the exception is the value of one itself. It is not considered a prime number. So beginning with the next prime number, we have two, followed by three, five, and seven. Okay. These are all the numbers that can only be divided by themselves and by one. And the next prime number after that already begins to be a two-digit prime number. So that is already the end of this set. Set B is made up of four elements, two, three, five, and seven. Now that we've understood what a set is and how to write out a set, let's explore relations instead. Representing a relation. A relation can be represented by any one of the three ways. A, firstly, a set of ordered pairs. Secondly, B, a graph. Or thirdly, C, an arrow diagram. In a set of ordered pairs, we will need to list out the ordered pairs themselves within the brackets, and each bracket is considered an element. Therefore, it should be written in a pair of curly braces separated by commas. The example you see is the ordered pair of 1, 3 is an element, the ordered pair of 2, 5 is another element, and the ordered pair of 3, 7 is the third element within this set. Alternatively, we can represent these ordered pairs as coordinates on a graph. As you can see from the graph in this diagram, we have the points 1, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 7 labelled on the graph. And this is the way that we show a relation by using the graph. Finally, we also have the option of an arrow diagram to represent the relation. Notice how the left bubble contains the values of 1, 2, 3, and the right bubble contains the values of 3, 5, 7. This is the way that we indicate the ordered pairs of 1, 3, 2, 5, and 3, 7 respectively. Now, discussing relations would not be complete if we don't look at certain features of the relation. And these features will help us to clarify which part of the relation we are thinking about. Determining domain, co-domain, object, image, and range of a relation. The arrow diagram shows a relation between set A and set B. Observe that set A contains the elements 1, 2, 3, while set B contains the elements R, B, Y, and Z. However, the element 1 will be mapped onto the element of R, while the element 2 is mapped onto the element of B, and the element 3 is mapped onto the element of Y, leaving the element of Z by itself with no element mapped onto it from set A. Set A is called the domain, meaning to say that the values of 1, 2, 3 is the domain set, while set B is called the codomain, giving us four elements in the codomain of this example which are R, B, Y, and Z. Once again, viewers, do note that all these elements are always listed in the pair of curly braces because each of, the, each of them are sets. Now, the elements of A, which are 1, 2, and 3, can also be called the object. And the elements of B, which are the result of the object values being mapped according to a certain relation are R, B, and Y, which can also be called the image. Hence, the range is the set of values which are the image of the object. Do you notice, viewers, that the element Z in set B has been left out of the range? That's because the element Z was not the image of any element in the object set. 
So there is a difference, viewers, between a codomain and a range, and that is, a codomain may include more values which are not the images of the objects, while the range only contains the elements which are the images of the object set. For example, the arrow diagram represents the relation between set A and set B. Notice how in set A, the elements given are negative 2, negative 1, 1 and 2, while the elements in set B are negative 4, negative 1, 1 and 4. We need to identify the domain, codomain, objects, images and hence the range in this situation. Let's take this example to the board viewers and discuss it together. Now, we have the diagram copied onto the board over here and we want to find the answers for these five items the domain, codomain, objects, images and range finally. As you know, the domain would be the values or the elements in set A. These are the elements that will undergo the relation to be mapped onto the elements in set B. So in set A, we have all four elements which will form the domain. And do remember, a domain is actually a set in itself, so it will be written within the curly braces with each element separated by a comma. The codomain will be all the available elements in set B. That means to say every single element in set B forms part of the set of the codomain. Hence, we have negative 4, negative 1, 1 and 4 as the codomain in this example. The objects are once again the elements of the domain, but viewers, when you are writing objects, you do not need to write them in curly braces, simply because objects here are not a set. They are just the individual elements. The same applies to images. The images, however, in this diagram are only 1 and 4 because all the four elements from set A were mapped only to these two elements in set B. So your images, as before, like objects, you do not need to write curly braces, but there are only two images in this case. That would mean that the range for this example also contains only two elements, which are 1 and 4, to be written in the set notation as mentioned just now. So viewers, with this discussion, I hope you understand how to identify a set, how to understand what a relation is, how to represent a relation, and then to understand the meanings of the words domain, codomain, object, images, and range. That's it for now viewers, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again on our next lesson, where we will continue with this chapter on functions. Goodbye from ITTV. Thank you.